to a fair number of them over the years. Um, you know, starting, you know, it was kind of the, just the thing we would we would do. We would go to shows. Not that many, because for a while we were poor college students and poor graduate college students. But um, when we could, we would we would go see shows. Rosu has been able to amass a collection of 150 Broadway show tunes that deal with economic principles, and it's a list that keeps on growing. He added a lot about a year and a half ago when the phenomenon Hamilton opened. It has so many songs that hit on economic topics that Rosu and a graduate student wrote a paper on it. Hamilton has songs about central banking, the Federal Reserve Bank, and how it was created. It also has a lot of songs about trade-offs. A lot of what we talk about in economics are issues with trade-offs. It has songs about opportunity costs. It has songs about time preferences, about taxes, about labor uh, economics issues and what types of jobs. There's literally a, a dozen or more songs in that show that hit on economic concepts. Basically the foundation of our country. Yeah, yeah, it was the foundation of our country. Some of it's some of it was the foundation of the actual mechanism. The, there's a, literally a song where there's a debate in there. Um, it's called Cabinet Battle Number One. It's a debate about uh, should the United States form a central bank and should the federal government assume the debts of the states. And they, they have a rap battle about that. That's how they portray the argument. But there's other songs about the formation of the country and about you know Alexander Hamilton's life in particular where it's much more individual trade-offs. There's one song where, um, and Take a Break is the title of the song, where Hamilton is trying to decide whether to work not or more. Well, it's not just Hamilton. Hamilton is um, working incredibly long hours. His family wants him to stop working. And in labor economics, there's, a, you know, there's what we call the labor-leisure trade-off, where you'd look at if somebody makes more money or would earn a higher hourly wage, how would that kind of what incentives are there to work more or less, and there's actually some competing incentives. It's a perfect song for talking about uh, the labor-leisure trade-off. Rosu says some of the songs have really obvious connections to economics, like If I Was a Rich Man from Fiddler on the Roof. In it, the lead character, Tevye, sings about what it would be like to be rich. But Rosu's favorite part is when he dreams about having three staircases, a backyard full of animals, and a wife with a proper double chin. Rosu says it's a great song to think about economic growth and how far we've come in 100 years or more. Because he says you would be hard pressed to find anyone in the developed world who would think those three things are status symbols for wealth. But he cautions there are still places in this world where people are living under $2 a day and economists and societies have to figure out what factors contributed to the tremendous economic growth in developed countries so the underdeveloped areas can flourish as well. He says a song called Stars from Les Mis is a great example of inelastic preferences. Javert swears to the stars that he doesn't care what the cost is, he is going to hunt down Jean Valjean for the rest of his life. Finally, Rosu cites another song that you may be familiar with. Let It Go isn't on Broadway yet, but he's quick to point out that in the frozen hit, Elsa is talking about a sunken cost. In economics, that means something that has happened in the past and it doesn't affect the future, so it should be ignored. He says that's the proper economic analysis for how a firm should behave if they have a sunken cost. His research into the songs led to work to create a website back in 2014. With the help of a Susquehanna IT student, broadwayeconomics.com went live in the summer of 2015 purely educational purposes. Yeah, that's part of, um, so it's educational fair use. Um, so I'm, I'm using author's material. Um, one one with restriction on that is you can't profit from it. Right. So there's no, um, there's no Broadway economic store or anything like that, and there really never will be um, on that because these are, um, this is designed to help uh, people who are interested in theater who might want to see where economics is in their favorite songs, or economic students who might want to learn uh, a different way to think about their concepts. Or often it could be economics teachers who enjoy, who like to s figure out another way to reach their students. So I know of several uh, economics professors from across the country who've gone to the site and then taken a song or two and then played that to their classrooms. There are over 50 songs on the website, all of which have lyrics on them, and many have what are called call-outs, a factoid about the economic concept in the song or background on what's going on in the song at that point. 
Rosu says there is a queue of songs waiting to get on the site and they try to add a new one each month. Rosu also started work six or nine months ago on a book on the topic. It'll be published by Rutledge Publishing with the working title, Broadway and Economics, Economic Lessons from Show Tunes. It goes alphabetically by show and then by each song as well because some shows have many songs. Each song in a show that is highlighted will include a write-up and while it deals mainly with show tunes, Frozen will be in it along with recent Oscar nominee La La Land. There's some word getting out about what he's doing. He's done some podcasts for Bloomberg and they've run some quotes of his on Hamilton tickets and scalping. He also was recently in a USA Today article called 11 College Courses in Pop Culture We Wish We Could Take, despite the fact that he doesn't teach a course on Broadway and economics. He says it would be an absolute blast to do so, and Susquehanna values interdisciplinary courses, but he doesn't have any plans to do it right now. Rosu says the Broadway industry is fascinating, and it does a very good job price discriminating, with theaters getting the most they possibly can out of somebody based on what they're willing to pay. He says he's probably seen between 70 and 80 shows, although not all were on Broadway. Some involved a touring company or were in a local theater, and he has also seen some in London's West End. He offers this advice for anyone interested in buying a ticket for a Broadway show. So if you look, there's a lot of ways you can buy tickets. You could just buy them straight from the theater, in which case you'll pay full price. Um, they have what are called rush lines often, or uh, where they'll sell a small amount of seats at a reduced price. Usually those seem like they're really, they're pretty good seats, but they might be, they might have a small obstruction. So maybe you're in the front row to the side, so you get a really good view of them, but every now and then somebody's kind of blocked. So um, they'll sell those seats for $30, really cheap price for a Broadway show. Then there's the tickets booth, the TKTS booth um, in Times Square, where they'll sell tickets for 30, 40, 50% off on the day of the show. Well, those are only the tickets that are left over, but you know, there's, um, it's another way that tickets could be purchased. Then there's other, there's a, a site uh, called Today Tix, which sells tickets. Sometimes they're at full price. Sometimes if the theater isn't selling well, they'll be for a discounted price. Rosu was able to buy his Hamilton tickets directly from the theater right after it opened as Christmas presents for his family for $89 a piece. They soon rose to 500, and now you're lucky if you can get one for less than $1,000. That means they saw the original cast with creator Lin-Manuel Miranda in the lead. He says David Diggs' dual performance as Lafayette and Thomas Jefferson was the best he's ever seen. He counts Hamilton among his favorites, along with Les Mis, which he has seen a couple of times. Funny story, by the time Rosu and his family got to see Hamilton on Broadway, tickets were selling $300 a piece. So he pitched this idea to his kids, sell the tickets and take home a nice tidy profit of $200 a piece. He says they looked at him like he was trying to steal Christmas. Once again, his website address, broadwayeconomics.com. If you have a segment idea for us, email us at iyn at secv8.com or stop by our Facebook page. I'm your host, Chris O'Rourke. We'll see you next time, maybe from in your neighborhood.